folks, so you're very welcome to the 2024 Spring Breeding Webinar here at Dovea Genetics. I'm John Lynch. Um, we're going to visit two farms tonight. One is in County Kerry, a very good suckler farm. We're producing Weanlands for the export market. And the second one is uh, County Cork. So a suckler farm, spring calving, very tight calving pattern, using a lot of synchronization producing bull beef under 16 months and selling his surplus heifers. So I'm going to kick off tonight by covering some of our Belgian Blue specialists for producing Winlands for the export market. So that market is growing. Uh, the prices at the top of it are exceptional at the minute. We've seen upwards of four euros a kilo and maybe heading for four euros fifty a kilo at these top E-grade Winlands. So. The first thing I'm going to cover maybe is a little bit on cow type for producing these calves. So the best results we're seeing around the country is good R plus U grade lemons and cows with milk using good Belgian blue bulls in them. They're, the progeny are very, very consistent. Now there is all cow types suit some blue bulls, but to produce that real consistent bunch of Englands, that good R plus U minus red or black lemons and cow, you can afford to use an extreme muscle Belgian blue bull on them and by doing that you will produce those good uniform bunch of Englands for export. The first bull I'm going to cover is, is a, a bull that's becoming very very popular, Bohard Overdose, he's a James Bond son, uh, he's breeding long clean muscular cattle, super ends in them, lovely heads in them, very very correct. Uh, beginning to be used in the show circuit but doing a very very good job on them lemons and type cows. He's average calving difficulty for a blue and he qualifies for the skept scheme. Okay. After that we're on to uh, a bull like Anne de Beaufort 4438. A very consistent bull. White bull carries the red gene. Calving is no problem. Breeding Long growthy cattle, super color, super color. He's easy calving on suckler cows, ticks all the boxes. We've seen all the Weanlands the last two years. We've seen Weanlands last year as high as 10,000 off him. He's doing a very, very good job. Even at the fat stock in Carrick and Shannon, a lot of good breeding heifers off him for that top end market. And then to follow on from him, you're talking about a red and white bull in Negrita de Lac. BB8019, topped all in Weanland sales last back end. The few progeny that came through. This is the first year we're going to see a lot of progeny off him. Farmer satisfaction is huge. The bull is easy calving. He's breeding lovely colours, super muscle, great tops in him. And the thing with Negrita is you're not going to be left on the bull calves either. You will have super shipping bull calves, okay? An easy calf in Belgian Blue Bull, maybe for second calvers onwards, or if you had a cow you felt was a little too muscular for the stronger bulls, a bull called Bricolage. He's used extensively in the dairy herd in Ireland, but he also is a useful bull for suckler cows that you're maybe a little concerned about calving. So good second calvers and on from that maybe more muscular cows. Uh, the bull is 7% calving difficulty in beef cows. He's white bull, he's breeding lovely colours, he's breeding blue roans off of full coloured cows, so full reds or full blacks. Um, and again, easy calving, nice quality, nice colours, ticking the boxes if you don't want hassle calving. <clears throat> okay, so just a few of the new blue bulls that we have in stock this year, uh, we had a bull hazard that done a super job in the commercial show scene. My personal feeling on the replacement for him is a bull called Avicii de Mahoney. So he's BB9725. We would have seen him in Belgium last summer. Very similar bull to Hazard. Extremely long. Square plated bull, super ending him, no middle, he's long, he's clean, he's very very correct, he's very showy, there's great life in the bull. He's the right colour to breed colours, 
Okay, so so if you're using them on a full coloured cow, you will get that colour through them. He's a white bull with blue spots and a bit of blue through his neck. Uh, a bull I think a lot of. There's no calves, there's a few pedigree calves in Belgium, but he was used quite a lot last autumn. Okay. The other bull is, is a bull called Ronaldo. He's probably the most extreme bull I would have seen in Belgium in a while. He's a Fute son, and Fute is their go-to bull in Belgium at the minute. He's the real hot bull in Belgium at the minute. Um, he's black and white, lovely head, good top on him, but very, very, very wide. Okay? And the last blue bull I'm going to cover for this job is a bull called Tanker. Tanker is a bull from Fabraca. He's a different type maybe to Ronaldo. He, he's long, he's clean, he's very, very correct. He's a bull, I think, is a replacement for Tattoo. Tanker. He's a white bull with black markings through him, lovely black patches in his eyes. The, we would have seen the first calves in Belgium off him. There were a pair of twin calves off a of pedigree cow. And if you had them at home, you'd be very, very happy with them to go to the commercial show scene. Um, he is available sex female. So, Tanker, his BB1096 is available sexed female, okay? The only other bull I'm going to cover is the bull James Bond. James Bond is doing a super job. Uh, Kevin is okay on suckler cows, but he is breeding them show cattle. Uh, if we go back to Carrigan Shannon to the Winter Fair, the top price on the first day was a heifer at 11,000, she was just 12 months the day of the sale. Everything you'd want in a show animal. Everything she, from her head to her tail, she was almost perfect. And that's a big statement. So, breed length, breed width, nice heads, they're correct for blues, doing a good all round job. Now we're going to have a look at a video that was pre-recorded on the farm of Michael Reynolds in Gortelé, County Kerry, and it's was just to give you a bit of background, uh, you'll see some clips of Weanlands that Michael has sold this spring in Gortelé Mart. Uh, fantastic producer of top quality Weanlands for the export market. It's a good type of cow, he's willing to use the better bulls, and yet he's back using the like a bricolage, Negrita, he used another bull, Red Lion. He's using the limousine bull, Clad and McCabe. So, so he is putting a lot of muscle to the party, but doing a fantastic job. And thankfully, Michael is getting well rewarded at the Weanland sales this spring. My name is Michael Reynolds, living here in County Kerry, got to Clay, Chile, County Kerry. Um, I have 50 sorts of cows and 70 acres of ground. Um, cow type would be mostly red limousine cows, so it's the purebreds a lot of them would be a handful of tachymeres through them. Um, bull type would be that 8019 and um, WBH used to be a bull I used to use a lot. I use a share of limousines that 2014 and heifers and I'd be dabbing a few different bulls that 5355. They'd be calving month of January, some of the cows would mostly April when they'd be calving, it's straight out to grass. I'd be going for cow, incinerate them outside and have them back in calve before they go in. I'd be typing for the export market mostly, 
fair enough, some of them would be home back of which it's mostly the export back it. and it's all dudes gone into the cows. That would do the replacements I'd go in. It's all here I use, the noble use, I'm using heat detection, a teaser bulb to pick up the calls when the main the eye them and they're left out again straight away. Okay, hey folks, so I hope you enjoyed watching the recording of Michael's progeny there. Uh, there's a lot of new bulls, Belgian blues, just to finish off on the blues. There's a lot of new blue bulls in our catalogue this spring. Uh, we went to Belgium last summer and purchased seven bulls. I think there's a couple of very special bulls in that batch. There's a bull, Fear de la Haas, BB9840. His father was a stock bull on the farm and he was as good a Belgian blue bull as I've ever seen on a farm in Belgium. It ticked all the boxes, really correct, super top, long, extreme muscle. And his granny is a full sister to Rocco de la Haas. Rocco de la Haas is a very, very influential bull in Belgium, and he was the sire of Tattoo. The other bull I really like, and I think he's maybe a replacement for 4438 or 4494, is a bull special de grand, BB9792. He's an attribute out of an adagio. He's very, very smart bull, lovely quality, and extreme muscle. But there were seven of them came back from Belgium. I'm just picking out two as examples. Now, the, the next system we're going to speak about is, is maybe a bull bee finishing system. So John Delay has concentrated very hard on improving his cow type. Um, John would have started with a lot of dairy influence in his cow herd. He'll cover that himself and has improved his cow herd immensely over the last five to seven years. Okay, He would have used some heavy terminal bulls on the dairy crosses and actually kept some of those cows. He also used a bull Castleview Casino very heavily and has a lot of daughters in the herd. So now I'm going to cover some of the go-to limousine bulls for the 2024 breeding season. And I'm going to start off with our 
A very upcoming bull, in my opinion, is Birch Park Rufus, LM7713. He's a fuchsia son out of a clad umpire cow. Um, he's as closest bull I've seen to Edendale Ivor that we have. Calvin is fine. The calves are very similar to Ivor's. Handy calves, born, fine boned, long, clean muscle, and de develop over time, okay? Regarding index, he is qualifying you for the skep. He's over 100 on replacement, but like he's breeding balanced calves that are easily born and doing a good job, okay? Uh, we have a new bull drumline S 1185, he's LM 9577, um, I'd have no question about saying he's the best Tom Shice lexicon son that has entered Irish AI, he was champion bull in Athen Rye last April and he was sold for a record in Athen Rye of 9100. He's off a very good simple cow that has bred well and bred a son in a pedigree herd that has bred very well. The bull is very well balanced. He's a lovely end in him, very long, great top in him, beautiful head, very, very stylish bull, okay? If you want index, this is the bull. There's no calves off him yet. A lot of semen was sold to the bull last autumn. We will have a great calving report on the bull, but I would think on second calvers on, this bull won't give you any trouble. The next bull is Brooklands Rowan, LM7716, a new bull. He's an EBY son. Um, his mother's a plum tree fantastic off of Queen's at Altea. The bull does carry one Q204X. He is breeding super cattle. Some farmers regard him better than EBY. They're more muscle. Just be aware he does carry the Q gene. So on heifers, I would be wary using a bull with a Q gene, but he's breeding super muscle progeny. If you look at the 2024 catalog, you can see some of the progeny that's there off him. Um, they have lots of shape. And the weanlings are just starting to come through now. And some of the weanlings sold extremely well in Ballinus Law a few weeks ago. Another new bull is Brantymore Sail Ring. This bull was purchased in Carlisle February 23, he cost 10,000 sterling. Um, went to Carlisle looking for a bull. There were four bulls in the pen by a new bull knock him sport. Well, he was a new bull to me. He's a little outcross. The bull is actually an outcross. He's different pedigree. And these four bulls really appealed to me. They had more power, more weight for age, good and wide, very correct, and he's a double nine four L. Personally, I think this bull is going to leave good females after him. He's extremely docile himself. He's wide, he's square plated, he's not extreme muscle, but he's very, very wide. Great plates in him, great top in him, long, good weight for age. Okay. The other bull is sleeve, sleeve fellum sterling, 8929. First calves are just starting to arrive off of this bull. Okay. Initial reports say he's fine on Kevin, that's on cows. Um, milk is going to where this bull is really going to win out, okay? So he's an Aravel Bavardage. He's off a very, very good Bavardage cow that's still going at 12 years of age in the farm. Super milker, very fertile cow. So look, we'll know more on this bull as the year goes on. Um, two more bulls I'm going to cover on limousines. Uh, Earn Valley Madison, LMS4745, he's a Q gene. Um, Calvin and Suckler Cows is fine, mature Suckler Cows. He's breeding super muscle cattle, okay? If you want to produce top U plus E grade Weanlands off of good cows, this is your bull, okay? You will be pulling an odd calf, but he is doing a super job in cows. The last limousine bull, keep the best wine to last, is Clad and McCabe. Uh, he's a double Q, and the interesting thing is, he's not hard calved for a double Q bull. When I say he's not hard calved, I'm not talking about putting him in heifers, I'm talking about on suckler cows. They're bored and good, straight, long store calves, and they're developing muscle from then on. Uh, I think if you look at the catalogue again, you'll see the range of cattle that was bred off from last year to come out to the show circuit. He was being used heavily, sexed female. Um, muscle, style, length, tops, ends, 
he's been used across Ireland, across the UK, trying to breed these show calves. But if you're an ordinary suckler farmer and you would have seen one selling with Michael Reynolds, he's doing a fantastic job. So now, we're going to go and we're going to watch John DeLay's farm or watch clips of John DeLay's farm and then we're going to cover maybe Charlie's and Semmental's when we come back and I will finish off with maybe a few comments on some of the other breeds, Parthenay Blonde, okay. Um, the one bull I will mention on John DeLay's farm before we go any further is Corrigine Gunshot. He's a cemental bull that John would have used heavily. Um, he's a bull that was subject to change in the November run of figures with ICBF. I suppose he lost 40 or 50 euros on replacement index, even that he was very well proven before the index run. Okay, But he's still doing a super job. He's breeding medium-sized cemental cows, great confirmation, loads of milk. We have him available sexed female. Even though his index isn't as high now, I would still be the cemental bull. I'd be really pushing to breed good functional cows with shape, not huge of themselves, and breeding very well. So now we're going to tune into John Delay. Andalay here from Cork McSherry in West Cork. Um, I'm farming here with my parents, Jordan and Andalay. We're a spring calving suckler system. We finish all our male progeny at under 16 months bull beef and we sell our surplus heifers to local marts around the country. We calve down in the springtime. Our bulls are finished under 16 months of age. Uh, last year we averaged 410 kilos carcass weight at a U equals. Um, our heifers are surplus and our surplus heifers are sold to marts around the country. Um, I suppose our cow type is predominantly limousine crossed with a bit of cement and a bit of charlie. Um, our previous cow type would have had a lot more dairy influence there as well. Um, so as we're veering towards the limousine breed a bit more, we find them a very versatile cow. A lot of our cows now would have 70-75% limousine in them. Um, I suppose the bulls that we're using, they would be predominantly Charlie, limousine and a few cemental bulls. Previously we would have had a lot of dairy beef influence in our suckler cows um, and we've moved away from that so we've gone down the route of using all AI and keeping all our own replacements out of the limousine sires um, and cemental sires as well. We find that we've quality coming into the calves now and it's reflecting in our killouts and our heifers that are sale in the mats. Previously we would have used a lot of stock bulls on our farm um, and we have moved away from that and we are 100% AI um, on this farm. So last year we synchronized all our cows to, I suppose, for a number of reasons. We found suckler cows are hard to detect uh, in heat. We find that synchronizing them simplifies the system of AI and we can AI all our cows over one weekend. Um, what we did was we did six weeks pre-breeding, so where we tail painted our cows, we recorded heats, and we moved it onto, um, I suppose, usually a scanner in as well. So a vet would come in five days before the breeding season, they would scan all the cows, and we would get um, a report back from our vet on what part of the cycle the cow was in. Based on that, if cows are cycling or if they are anaesthetic, we would 
um, treat the cow or we would go on a program with each cow um, there. So we tend to have three different groups. We'd have an anesthetist group where cows weren't cycling. We would have a group that were mid-cycle and we'd have a group that were early um, cycling. Based off that we would generate a program and we would aim to have all our cows AI'd over one weekend. We put all our labour into AI'ing the cows over the weekend. So we would keep our cows close to the yard in fields that is easy to bring them into the yard. Um, we would have all our bulls selected for our cows. So we would have cows that we want to keep heifers from. We would have bulls selected for that. Mainly cement limousine. Our terminal type sires in, we use a lot of Charlie at there on our cows that we want uh, animals out of for finishing. Um, I suppose the benefits of synchronizing, it's the ease of management around the AI time. So we can get the timing spot on, we can um, bring the cows in, get them AI quickly and get them back out to grass in a stress-free environment. So what are benefits to synchronize our cows? We find we have a nice even bunch of calves of similar age and weight. It makes management practices such as weighing our calves, dosing vaccines very easy. Um, I suppose our calving spread as a result has been quite tight this year and it allowed us to I suppose, be really vigilant around calving time um, there and we've had very little, no calving issues this year. Um, everything has been born unassisted um, and I suppose that's down to AI and we can use our proven sires with the level of calving difficulty that we know the cow will have the ability to calve. So we calve all our heifers at 24 months of age here. Our heifers this year that we've calved down are out of CWI and Cavelin's Jolly. We're very happy with them. They calve down with no problems. The bulls that we're using on them, uh, EBY, Kirspic Karma, and Tribesman, an Angus bull there as well. So we're very happy with the group of cows that we have out of our heifers. They have plenty of milk. Uh, heifers have started cycling back again for the upcoming breeding season. Um, but as you can see, the, the quality of the cows that they're producing, we're very happy with them. So we use 100% AI um, on the farm here. I suppose it gives us a wide access to good genetics, good sires that we know will calve down with no problems and produce a quality calf at the end of the day. What we do is we have 36 cows. We had 36 cows for breeding last year. We would have tail painted all our cows and heat detected four to five weeks before breeding. After that we contacted our vet who scanned all the cows five days out from AI. Of the 36 we had three different groups. We had a group of cows that were anestrous we, and a few heifers that had not cycled yet. We had a group of cows that were mid-cycle, so between 7 and 18 days. And then we also had a group of cows that were within 7 days of coming into heat. Based on where they were in their cycle, we had three different programs. Our cows that were um, non-cycling, they would have gone on a program with a, a cedar and estimate. And then all other cows received two mils of estimate depending on the timing of their cycle. This allowed us to AI all our cows and heifers from Friday, Saturday, Sunday to Monday. And again, we could optimize timing of AI. We had our cows close to the yard, so it was very easy to turn our cows in. Um, and I suppose we were a lot more vigilant around heat detection and keeping an eye on when cows were, were standing in heat. Of the 36 cows, we had eight repeats who subsequently held and at, we had 34 cows in calf after the breeding season. So for the upcoming breeding season, what we hope to do, um, I suppose today is the first, first week of March. Um, we're about six weeks away from breeding season. We will tail paint all our cows in the coming weeks and we will record any heats. Um, after that then, um, we'll call our vet again five days before breeding season, scan all our cows and get our groups organised and get our programmes in place as well. Um, we'll do AI for six weeks, um, just 
Hopefully Latham will hold to the first conception um, and then we'll pick up repeats then as well. Um, we have heifers this year coming from Corrine Gunshot and uh, Cavelands Jolly. Um, they will go on a program as well. Um, and again, we'll be using Charlie Bulls terminal base sires on our uh, mature cows there as well. So great to see how John's herd has progressed there. Um, kicking on to Charlie's now. I think our go-to bull in the Charlie world at the minute is still probably not my Loki. Why is that? Because he's easy calving. He's breeding super weanlings. He's ticking the box on all figures but he's great quality calves. They're getting into good weight for age. Uh, and they're lovely style to them. Okay, so, so he's ticking the box in the line of calving ease, quality, and weight for age, okay? He's not extreme. He's a double F94L. She's not extreme, extreme, but he is doing a nice job. If you want to use a Charlie with no hassle calving, nice quality calves, Loki is the boy. But if you want an easier calving option, there's a bull popular in Mac, similar carcass weight to Loki, won't have the same shape, but very, very easy calving. He's only 4% calving difficulty in suckler cows. He is for somebody that wants to use Charlie and doesn't want any hassle, okay? On from those two bulls, and we're talking about bulls that we've won and two crops of calves off of, and the bull, two bulls that seem to be doing a fantastic job and are coming through really well. The first bull is Tully Village Shane. He's a carrot back hutch who was CKH, who was a Dove bull we had years ago. He was a Trotton Bon Jovi off of a CF52 cow. This bull carries one Q204X gene, okay? He's average calving for a Charlie, so he's, he's settling around 8% calving difficulty, but he's super calf quality, okay? You will have an odd pull with them, but muscle, tops, ends, real good weanlands. Those weanlands that are gonna top the town next October in weanland sales. And the other bull, and this was only in the last two, three weeks, we're seeing a lot of calves coming off him, is Canton View Supreme. He's a fist and son off a blade like dig or cow. Again, he has one Q204X. Stars everywhere. So replacement, terminal, calving is good. Carcass weight is phenomenal at 50 kilos, but he's breeding mostly cattle, okay? Fine boned, mostly cattle. Okay, and I guess that's why Loki is so unique, because Loki, the bull we covered 4159, is still breeding lots of muscle, and he's a double 94L. Okay, the other two bulls, and I suppose there's a lot of people asking me every week, is Clina Superior, Clina Superior and Clean Shanna Socks. Feedback is exceptional, okay? The first Superior calves are about a month old, no issues Kevin. he's a Domino 52 son himself, he's a real muscular bull, no issues Kevin so far, and very, very nice calves, okay, thick, thick shapey calves, beautiful little heads in them, real weanling bull. Socks, I, I really like Socks myself, he's out of a super, super Cloverfield excellent cow, an exceptional cow, uh, he's by Balmile Vagabond, the first calves are on the ground. They're like the bull. They're long, growthy calves, great tops and great hens in them. They are going to be powerful weanlings with shape, okay? The last Charlie bull I'm going to cover is Bud Arfus, CH5932. If you want that extra step on calving and on your weanlings, Arfus is definitely the bull. Okay, so he's around 12, 11% calving on beef cows, 40 kilos of carcass weight proven, Ooh, super weanlets. Muscle, they've power, they've weight for age. He's a 52 pirate, okay? Has one Q gene. So basically, if you want that extra shape, more muscle, you are talking about a bull with a Q 
and an F, or a Q, 204X. Sox and Loki are the two bulls that carry a double nine four L. So look, <clears throat> that's the Charlie's covered. I'm going to cover a blonde Aquanen bull BA4661. Very easy calving blonde bull. Very muscular progeny. Huge farmer satisfaction with this bull. People are very happy with the calves. Super bull for winners for us bull. And an easy calving part in a bull. And that easy calving part in a bull is a bull called Hongos PT8923. Uh, he's a double NT. The two part in a bulls we have are a double NT. He's down at under 3% for calving. Okay, but real extreme shape. The blonde and the parsley, and all I would say is you are going to be targeting the Wingland for export market if you do use them. And a short horn bull, we have seen a resurgent in maybe the short horn breed. Um, Castlefin Hotshot, he's SH6424. Super quality cattle. Kevin is good. Um, the Great shape to them for a bull that's my stat and free in a short run. Superb shape to them. Finish off tonight and after covering the short run bull, I'm going to finish with two Hereford and two Angus bulls. Um, two Herefords. The first bull is a Ski An or Fruitful. HE7545. Um, if you're looking for a Hereford bull to use in pedal pose, the bull is ticking the boxes. It's easy cat. Very good cats. Okay. Used, used widely on dairy cows across the country and if you're looking to breed sons it'll be easily sold bull is doing a good job the last herb bull i'm going to mention is a pulled bull ring fort one carlos he 8935 first calves are easily born lovely quality pulled bull good indexes replacement terminal dairy beef and the last two bulls of the night are two youngest bulls um, if you're talking about Angus bulls for sucker cows or pedigree cows, Kama, Kersby Kama AA4638 is, uh, I would class him as an exceptional Angus bull. The power, the length, the bone, the exceptional weight for age. Um, on a pedigree or a commercial sucker unit, he's doing a very, very, very good job. Another bull is Stoutpool Bomber, uh, a bull that came out of the UK. Both these bulls came from the UK. Both bulls are some quarter size. They're not extreme. Bomber's breeding a bit more shape than Karma. Thicker, musclier cattle. Both bulls are minus that and free. And again, wait for age. Using the likes of Bomber on a commercial circle cow, we've seen the Angus Commercial classes in Carrick and Shannon Winterfair the last two years have been won by two bomber calves and the big cattle was won by uh, a bomber bullock this year. So look folks, um, we have a lot of new technology, we're, we're investing a lot of money in the industry, we definitely are committed to the suckler herd in Ireland. Uh, sperm vital is something on maybe Irish suckler farms is going to play a huge part going forward, it's new technology. It's from Norway. It doubles the lifespan of the semen. So on problem breeders or a cow that's coming born on a Saturday evening and you want to take Sunday easy, this semen will live twice as long as conventional semen. So the lifespan of sperm vital is 48 hours. And I think the other thing I didn't mention a lot going through, Sex semen, we have the largest range of sex semen available across all breeds. Um, we're seeing a huge uptake of sex semen all the last two years. It's working quite well on suckler farms. Um, and there's a vast range within breeds. Okay, Limousin, Blue, Cemental, Angus, Hereford, those five breeds are well covered in sex semen. If you have any specific requirements, don't hesitate to email or phone us here in the Bay and we will try our best to do anything we can for you. Just before I finish, um, I think 
I have to pay credit to one person here, and that's Dara Giblin. He was the man out in the farms recording the data. He's the man keeping you informed on our social media platforms every day. I suppose if the progeny weren't good enough, Dara wouldn't be able. And lastly, to thank you, the farmers. Keep sending us the information. Keep sending us the pictures. We love to see the stories. I suppose, personally, I give a lot to putting these bulls together. The gives a lot to putting the bulls together and to see them working out and see them doing a good job is, is huge satisfaction for us. We pride ourselves on what we do. Now, we have John DeLay and myself and we're going to have a little chat about John's synchronizing programs and feel free if you have any messages to text them. There was a number flashed up at the start for questions. Text them to that number and we will try and deal with all your questions. We're going to hold it to 10, 12 minutes and best of luck on the breeding season for 2024. Okay, folks. Um, I think we've a lot covered there and I don't know how many questions I'm going to have for you on the synchronizing, John, because you, you covered well. I suppose... You had exceptional conception, John, and a lot of that is down to the hard work pre-breeding. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely, I suppose. Um, one thing I didn't mention in the video there is we might um we restrict the calves sucking so they'd suckle twice a day. We find that it's a mighty way to bring cows back around cycling. Um, but yeah, getting cows out to grass, doing simple things there, just um getting good quality silage in front of them and and heat detecting there as well, like so. Um <laughs> Okay, so look at it. I suppose a question came in whilst the webinar was on about breeding heifers and calving at right. 24 months and what age and weight. And the, the, this is a minefield, guys. So some people can breed heifers at 420 kilos. More people like to breed heifers at 720 kilos. Who's right and who's wrong? Well, I'm not going to say who's right and who's wrong. But with yourself, John, um, I just seen all your heifers were there together. I presume after the calve at 24 months, that's the critical point of their lives to get them back cycling, get them back working. Are they getting special treatment, John, when they calve as 24-month-old heifers? So you might just take us through yeah, I suppose maybe your I... targets at Bullen, John, and then how you manage them to get them back calving as a second calver at 36 months. That That's the key yeah. thing. I suppose the way I look at it, I nearly take it back nine months previous. I think the bull that they go on calf is very important as well in the first point. So as I said, I'm using Angus, EBY, uh, Ivor would be in a bull I used previous as well. So they calve down easily, unassisted for their first calf, having them at the right weight of bulling. Um, so my heifers there at the moment, um, they're between 380 to 400 kilos. I'll be breeding in about a month's time probably. Um, so they, they should have another 30 kilos on them. So, um, do you know, Sorry. um, so yeah, they're around 13 months now, 13, 14 months. Uh, they're, I have four gunshots, um, heifers there in the jolly. Um, so again, they're out in grass now. Look, I'm lucky enough. They're out in the field, five of them together there. They're not doing much, uh, much harm, but they're getting grass into them. Um, when the heifer calves down, absolutely, they get the best quality silage. Um, they get um, they are getting a small bit of meal there as well to help them um after calving, but just keeping that um, I suppose getting that heifer eating good quality silage, bit of ration, and getting grass into the diet in as well, um, you know. So um, but as I said, if they can calve down on their own for the first time very easily, and that's down to using AI, you're guaranteed the genetics. You have the reliability figure there behind you. You have the calving figure, so you know you know what the bulls are yeah. going to give you, like so. And yeah. I says that that's the key point, John. Pre breeding have to be target weights, and when they calve, um, you need to look after those twenty four month old heifers. It, it's no big deal to calve heifers at twenty four months, but it's to get them back around, get them cycling, get them working, and get yeah. them calving again at thirty six months. And I suppose you are lucky, John. You're on a good land type, and you can get those cattle out early yeah. and get cows out early, and it's yeah. suiting your system. Yeah, it helps. It's so, John. Yeah. yeah. My, my next question for you, and this is maybe hitting you a bit hard, but your bull kilouts, so you're around 410 kilos now. Where has that come from, John, in the last five years? Your cow type has improved. 
Um, are you seeing a huge benefit in your killouts, your bulls, or your performance, your bulls, or wh where are you seeing the benefits? Uh, definitely, um, definitely, carcass weight has come up over the last. I was looking at it actually before tonight. Uh, to 380 kilos, you know, we're up 400 consistently now last year and and the year before. So, um, the carcass weight is definitely coming up on them. Um, the grades are improving as well. Um, yeah find it easier to get cattle into into high grades there as well so um okay. you know, just yeah so, so you're yeah. up 20 25 kilos john by that, coming yeah. yeah the next you know, step we're... away from where you were exactly yeah and you know i'm i'm using that bull ch4159 loki there and just okay. extremely happy with the bulls over him i'm very happy yeah with them. yeah and John, when you're looking at bull for um Cav and your heifers, um I just seen the three bulls you're using. I suppose karma would be on the stronger side. Had you any issues calving the karmas or were they off your bigger heifers or um no no issues whatsoever with him. Um I've actually ordered karma straws for, for the heifers this year. I'm gonna use the all karma on them. Um just really happy with the, the few calves that I have on the ground. Um but yeah. no, I, I yeah, very happy with them. Yeah. And I suppose, look, I'm just going to tip through some of the questions that came in here, lads. I'm not going to delay you. It's 10 to 9. Um, Dermot sent in, looking for the best blue bull for replacements. I presume breeding replacements with colour. Uh, I cover that. 4438 is probably the most all-round bull. He's giving you that bit more growth. Getting into big, long cattle. And I personally haven't seen a lot of them calf, but would be my preference for breeding replacements. PJ looked about LM2014. Unfortunately, the bulls are no different from people. Folks, they don't live forever. It'd be great if we could clone them and they did live forever, but um, 2014 isn't available this year. I think Birch Park Rufus is, is my pick of the bulls to make the next 2014. Um, we've covered the one on, on weight, for, weight and age. People are looking for a new Solaire Bull. Um, currently, we don't have them. We probably don't have a new Solaire Bull. We will be looking for a new Solaire in the autumn, maybe. And the best Charlie Sire for Solaire. So, depending on how far you want to push it, but in fairness, Solaire cows have super calving ability. Uh, Bud Orphus, or another Bull, Bally M. Rocco, that I didn't cover in the, in the presentation. Rocco would be an option for Solaire cows. He's over 20% calving difficulty, but uh, he's the closest thing we've, we would have had to cross the line of Euro since we had Euro CSQ, um, and they are exceptional cattle. And he is bringing enough shape to the party for Solaire's. I wouldn't be afraid maybe to use that new cat in view, Supreme. Uh, he, he, again, muscle, hard muscle kind of bull, and breeding them fine bone calves. Okay. There's another question in here on the best time to use sex semen. So I suppose regarding sexed, uh, later is better. So so the recommendation is between 20 and 22 hours after standing heat. If you're using a technician, you have once a day AI, um, make sure your cow is bulling at the right time to suit the AI. And it's very hard to say, but if she's not bulling at the correct time, use a conventional straw on them. Um, Noel, Out the Gap podcast, is the Slayer Bull Montesque safe enough to use in heifers? Or would you advise only on cows? Um, His figure would suggest, Noel, that he's a little strong for heifers. I suppose, depending on the type of heifer you're calving or what age she is, you could maybe go a bit stronger there. Um, EBY and LM2014 heifers. We have a limousine bull, Ivan Tanov. He's extremely easy calving. He's LM5887. He's under 4% calving difficulty in heifers. And he would be my pick for... Um, using an EBY and 2014 heifers, okay. Um, what bull would you recommend? Is Hongrass suitable to breed replacements? Hongrass is very high in the replacement index, he does carry two copies of the NT gene. So, look, 
if you are using them on lemons and cows or whatever kind of cows, you're going to have an NT gene in the heifers. So just be aware of that on the next generation. Yeah, I don't see any problem using them to breed replacements. But um, just watch the heifers like the Belgian Blue will carry an NT gene. What's James Bond like for Kevin? So James Bond BB4396, uh, average, maybe above average Kevin. I think the people using Blue Bulls Definitely are well aware of how to calve cows. They have a specific cow type that suits the likes of these more terminal, heavily muscled sires. And they have cows in very good order, Kevin, now. So look, Belgian blue bulls are specific. Calving difficulty, if we're to look at figures, are all at 12 and 13 and 14 percent. When you go to farms, are they that hard? Probably not. Okay. Um, is McCabe okay for second calvers in the purebred limousine? I would like to have my myostatin status of my limousine cow before I use them. So if you have a heifer or a second calver, a second calver carrying a cue, I will be slow to use McCabe, okay? A Charlie Bull to produce replacements. Um, John Dilley, I'm going to hit you. You have some low-key cows in your herd. Yeah, I have two Loki cows. Um, they're out of a cemental cow. Um, very happy with them. Just are um, I've crossed them back to a limousine. Cavelin's Charlie was um one, and I've won uh Earn Valley Madison out of one now as well. So, yeah, they're a nice type of a cow. I'm very happy with them to go back and calf. Um, yeah. so, and milk, yeah. John, have they enough milk? Yeah, they have. In fairness, they've plenty of milk. So, um, just just said I keep them. Yeah. So, um. I would also say Potler and Mark. If you were going on maybe a more muscular cow, Potler and Mark will also bring good replacements, okay? Bricolage, the Bofo, Belgian Blue for strong heifers. Um, buyer beware. We don't recommend Belgian Blues for heifers. Uh, our heifers are getting muscular and muscular. I, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say about using a Belgian blue and heifers, any Belgian blue. The last bull I remember we had suitable for heifers is a bull of card S527. And that's a long time ago. Red Angus, red pepper. How is he breeding? He's breeding well. He's doing a good job. Um, He's doing a good job. Breeding big, long, growthy cattle. Performing well. Used a lot in the dairy herd. Um, And yeah, for maybe breeding suckler replacements, he... He's doing a good job. So why has Ballyam Rocco calving difficulty gone so high? Um, I should say carries the Q gene. Is he that hard, Kevin? I think 20% is maybe a bit strong for the bull. We would have some farmers that use them and back using them again this year on the cows. I think the thing we are forgetting is our cows are getting more we're keeping shape of our cows um maybe we're losing our calving ability a little bit and then we want to use the fancier bulls so i think that's the biggest job we have at the minute is getting bulls that are easy calving and still breeding the quality and i suppose you go back to a bull like eby elderberry galahad why is he so popular because he was so easy calving and he was breeding these real good cattle as well as breeding color but he was breeding real good cattle okay what my statin should you avoid in your suckler cow um richard i would say i'm not saying you should avoid any i'm saying i think the biggest positive of us genotype in our suckler cows is that we have our myostatin status now and any have for you genotype or cow now you will get the myostatin status of that cow it's about using the correct bull on that cow. So if you have a, a cow with a Q and nothing else, you avoid bulls with a Q gene. Okay? And this is John Delay said he kept heifers off of Knock My Loki. He knew keeping them, he wasn't going to have any Q genes. So he knew he could go back Charlie again in them with a Q gene and he wasn't going to run into severe difficulty. So I think... Definitely, it's about knowing. It's not about what they should have or shouldn't have. Some people love Q genes. Some people love NT genes. More people like double nine four Ls. 
more people don't know, and it's the people that don't know. And there's nothing wrong with a bull that's carrying no jeans. You look at a bull like Potler and Mark, he's no jeans, he's breeding very, very good cattle. Um, synchronization, look, we don't go into it. Um, the best thing I can do, tell you, is to talk to your vet. The vets are very, very well up on it. Um, the drugs companies have a lot of research done on this. Um, the, the drugs companies have a lot of research done and they are well informed on it. So Patrick is here. First year trying all AI. Don't have a moo call. What heat detection could work with a once a day inspection? I'm organic, so can't do synchro. Patrick, you need to get yourself a teaser bull um, very quickly and get a chin ball on him and maybe try and call to see the cows twice a day if possible. Um, once a day inspection and trying to do all AI is going to be fairly tricky. Yeah. Okay, what bull would you recommend for Angus cows in the dairy herd? Very good question. Um, so what I would say here is probably your more terminal limousines, your more terminal Charlies, and keep an eye on the Kevin because you can't forget you still have that dairy influence in your cows. Um, there is only so far you can take it. I think a bull like Erin Valley Madison would be a very good cross on the dairy cow. Uh, Loki. Tunchella socks, that kind of bull. And even the likes of Birch Park Rufus, if you were a little concerned about calving them and you wanted to get a, a better standard of calf, they, that would be definitely one to use. Sperm vital available in Corrigan Gunshot. Uh, I'm not sure. I know we have sexed female semen of Gorahin Gunshot. Um, we also have two other cemental bulls. There are two clona bulls. Uh, one very easy calving bull. The other is more uh, more like Gunshot, maybe. But I think Gunshot is the one cemental bull to me that has done a fantastic job. We were spoiled to have him. Um, to have him long enough that we got sexed off him. Um, and why I like him so much is the cemental... He, they're medium sized, they have super conformation, they have milk, they have calving ability, they're fertile, and they're putting that through to their calves. Okay. Um, so they are breeding very, very well. So I have some first and second generation lemons and sires by CWI and EBY, which go back to Blue Cross Dairy on the dam side. Does this mean I won't be able to use blue sires in them as the risk of them carrying a copy of the NT gene? That came in from Richard. Test for myostatin. Genotype or cows, Richard, and test for myostatin. Kevin asks, when is your 48-hour semen available? That is the sperm vital. Um... It's available currently. It's pre-order, so you have to tell your AI man or your AI technician or AI woman that you're going to use it. So, yeah, that is available currently. So, look, folks, um, I think we're going to wrap it up there. We haven't all covered. There's just one question here. What's a good short term for crossing the limits and cows with a bit of milk? Well, I covered... Castle Finn Hotshot is definitely the bull I like for that job. He doesn't carry any myostatins. He's a good type bull, great square plates, good pelvis, um, and definitely doing a good job. And he has no myostatins, so you'll be a lot safer. Okay. Um, there's an anonymous attendee, and this is a very good question. I'm going to finish with this. Supreme has a Q gene and a 6% calving difficulty. Loki is a double nine four l at 6% calving difficulty. Which is easier, calving? Supreme is an unproven bull, okay? So his calving figure is only genomic. And this is a little bit of the issue. You can't trust that calving figure. That bull could wind up at 4% or 14% when he's proven, okay? It's only a guess. Even that there's... A genomic evaluation in his in his figures, 
6% really means nothing. Loki has thousands and thousands and thousands of calves. 6% is his real true figure. Okay. Um, any commercial calves seen off of Avicii? No. No is the answer. No is the answer. It will be the autumn before there is calves off him. Uh, is Belgian Blue Overdose good? Easy Kevin. Uh, I don't know. Is he easy Kevin enough? I don't know. Is he easy Kevin enough? That's being very honest. Um, he's fine on that system. So, folks, look, we've over 20 questions answered. Um, a replacement for for heifers currently. We don't have a replacement sex because it's very, very tricky sexing a bull that we don't know enough about Kevin. We have Brooklands Marco available sex. He's slightly stronger, but maybe using him sex to get away with him on heifers. Okay, folks. So look, uh, Michael Reynolds, thank you very much for your your what you did for us recording the video. Cattle are credit you, showing them in Gorta Clay. John DeLay, super job. Again, showing your surplus heifers in the same mart. Um, and thanks to everyone for tuning in. I, I've said all I'm going to say and wish everyone the very best in the 2024 breeding season. And hopefully we'll see you around with some of the sales during the year. Thanks very much. Thanks, John.